My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here. GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the middle of redoing the problems and we are on page number 170. Please turn to it. Page number 170, problem number 130. Problem number 130. That means 100 more to go after this problem. Here's what it says. Which is, which is equivalent which is equivalent to the pair of inequalities that they give us. They give us a pair of inequalities and we are, our job is to identify, identify one answer choice that is equivalent to what has been shown in these two pair of inequalities. The first one is this. We are told that x plus 6 is more than 10. This is too simple. This is too simple, too straightforward, more than 10. And the second one is, second one is, x is, x minus 3 is less than or equal to 5. What we need to understand here is that because of the fact, because of the fact they use the word and, that means the value of the x, whichever the value of the x that we're going to claim, has to satisfy this inequality and this inequality simultaneously at the same time. So let's find out what's going on. We have to solve for x here. We subtract 6 from both sides so we can have the x by itself. 6 drops out and this one tells that x has to be more than 4. Let's see what this says. If you were to add 3 to both sides, 3 will drop out and this says that x has to be less than or equal to 2. Well, x has to be, something has gone wrong drastically. It cannot be less than or equal to 2 and more than 4. What happened? Oh, we are adding 5 plus 3 is, what the hell? 5 plus 3 is 8. We are adding 3, not subtracting 3. There you go. So that's it. We are done. It has to be more than 4. So here's our x. It has to be more than 4 and it has to be less than or equal to 8. There you go. Less than or equal to 8. We are done. This is our answer. Whichever answer choice shows you this part, X, x falls between 4 and 8, except this end has an equal sign as well. And that's answer choice, that's answer choice D. That's it. As I said, it's, it's a pretty straightforward, pretty simple problem. Let's go to the next one. Number 131. Number 131. 131 says, David is three times as many as Jeff. And half as many as Paula. How many together? Uh, the pretty simple, pretty straightforward question. There are two ways you can go about it. One is the classical way, the orthodox way, the traditional way, the algebraic way, and the other one is the plugging in method where you plug in numbers. Either way would do the job just fine. It's a pretty straightforward question. David has three times as many as Jeff and half as many as Paul. Paula. So plug in a number for David you like, whatever number that you like, you can plug it in. Let's pretend that D is equal to let's pretend D is equal to 15. Why 15 and why not 10? Why are we plugging in 15 and not 10? Because they go on to say that David has three times as many as Jeff. If you plug in 10 here, then Jeff will end up having some fraction here. And I think we're talking about books here. Even if we were not talking about the books, why should we plug in a number which gives us a messy calculation? Do you understand? So that's why it's 15. It has to be a nice multiple of 3. So if David has 15 books, then Jeff would have to have 5 books. J equals 5. And then they go on to say that he has half as many books. This is David. David has three times as many as Jeffrey and half as many as Paul. 
David, has, David we said, has 15 books and he has half as many as Paula, so Paula must have had 30 books. Question is how many total? So D plus uh, T plus J plus P would be 15 plus 5 plus 30, that's, the, that's 50. That's our answer, that's our punchline. All we have to do now, all we have to go do now is to go through all the answer choices, go through all the answer choices and see which, and wherever we see D, we plug, we substitute it with 15, wherever we see J, we replace it with 5, wherever we see P, we replace it with 30, until we come upon an answer that works out to be 50, and that's our answer. Let's look at answer choices. A says, A says, 5, 6, 5, 6, D. 5, 6, D. D and D is 15. D is 15. Divide top and bottom by 3, we'll end up with a 5 and a 2. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 divided by 2 is not going to give us 50. A does not work. B says 7 third times D. Again, D is 15. So it's 7 third times 15. And we end up with 5. 5 times 7 is 35. We're looking for 50. B does not do the job. C says 10 third D, which is 10 over 3, times D, which is 15, and we get 5 times 10, 5 times 10 is 50, which is what we're looking for. The answer is C. The answer is C. So this was more of a plugging in method. This was more of an unconventional method. Now if you wanted to do it algebraically, it's actually not that bad. It's very simple. David, we are told, is 3 times as many as Jeff. So David is 3 times J. David is 3 times J. And David, we are told, is half as many as Paula. Is half as many as Paula. Whatever the, whatever the number P is, D is half as many. Now the question is, what is their sum? That's their sum. How many, how many together? How many together? This can be David plus Jeffrey plus Paul. David plus Jeffrey, which is... Uh, now, we have to, now we have to solve this equation for J in terms of D. D is equal to 3J, which is same as saying that J is equal to D divided by 3. D divided by 3. And Paul is, Paula is going to be 2 times D. If we multiply both sides by 2, we can get rid of this 2. And P equals 2 times D. Put it in here. And then we have to find the common denominator. The common denominator of of uh, this this quantity is here. Multiply this by th top and top and down by three. Multiply this by top and bottom by three, and that's it. We're done. The common denominator is three. Three times d is three d plus a d right here, and then two d times three. Two d times three is sixty. Sixty plus d is seventy. Seventy plus three is ten d, and we end up with ten d over three. But this was a very algebraic, this, this was a very classical solution, do you understand? Let me put a demarcation here so that we can keep them separate in our, there. So this was a classical solution, that was a plug-in way, plugging in way. Let's do one more, the last one on the page. I need a break again for a second. And if you can handle the algebra, if you can handle the algebra, then this is fine. If you are, if you, if you have an aversion to algebra, if you do not like algebra, uh, or if you feel that you're going to make some careless mistake, the problem with the algebraic method is that if you solve the problem in, the, uh, in a very classical way, very orthodox, very very academic way, then if you end up making one of the if you end up making one of the four most popular mistakes, then your answer choice that you arrive at is going to match one of the answer choices that they give you. They're giving you five answer choices. One of them, of course, is the right answer. You have to ask yourself, where do the other four answer choices come from? The other four answer choices are the four most popular wrong answers if the problem is solved in a classical way. If you solve it in a classical way, and if you end up making one of those predictable mistakes, then you will never know that you made a mistake because your answer choice will match one of the answer choices that they give you. But with the plugging in technique, they cannot trap you. They cannot trap you because it's a, it's a non-classical method. They have no way of knowing what you're going to plug in. You understand? Let's do one more.
the last one, 132. In 132, that give us list 1, which is 3, 6, 8, and 19. Here is the list 2, which is x, 3, 6, 8, and 19. Essentially, they are the same list, except it has, this one has one more entry, which they, are, which they are not telling us what it is. It is it's represented with the letter x. What we are told is that the median, median of list 1 is same as the median of list 2. And the question is, what is the value of x? Very simple. Let's find the median of uh, list 1. Here's our list 1. List 1 is 3, 6, 8, and 19. The median, as we know, is the middle number after the number that after the numbers have been arranged in either ascending order or descending order. After all the numbers have been arranged either in increasing order or in decreasing order, either in ascending ascending order or descending order. Here the entries are already arranged: 3, 6, 8, 19. And the median is the middle number. But the problem here is that we don't have odd number of numbers, we have even number of numbers. And therefore the median is going to be the average of these two. The median is going to be the average of these two. The average of 6 and 8, the number that falls right in the middle, is 7. And that's the median. That's the median of the list number 1. Now here's our list 2. In list 2, median also has to be 7. Okay, keep listening. Median also has to be 7, but there is no 7 here. Do you see any 7 in this list? There are 5 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are, since there are 5 numbers, that means the median is the middle number. And that middle number has to be 7 because the medians are equal to each other. And the median we just found out of the list 1 is 7. But there is no, there is no 7 in the second list, which tells you that x is your 7. Here's our list. 3, 6, 7, 8, and 19. There is your median, and this is our x. Our x equals to 7. And this is how the numbers are arranged. 3, 6, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 19. And of course, arrange in order, 7 falls right in the middle. That's the median of the second list, which is the same as the median of the first list. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? We're not going to start the problem on the next page. Let's just end it here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.